All right, guys, welcome back to the Productivity Corner podcast. It has been a hot minute. It's been a while. Uh, personally, for me, it's a couple weeks out from going back to school. Uh, I'm, I'm quite excited, but uh, we're not going to talk a lot about that today because we are going to be talking about an antidote to chaos and being precise in your speech, which is from the book or this concept is based upon the book. 12 Rules for Life by Jordan B. Peterson. I read this book a couple months ago. Uh, it took me a good month or so to go through the whole book. It's quite a quite a long book, I'd say. It's close to 400 pages. And it's about um, 12 rules, which can help you find, which is the subtitle, an antidote to chaos, right? And then rule 10, uh, which is about page 360. Let me quickly double check that. I think it's 359. Uh, he talks about, or 259, I should say, whatever, I, I, I can't find it. Rule 10, uh, he talks about being precise in your speech, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but before we do that, I'd like to introduce the second book, which is uh, where some of these concepts uh, come together, which is uh, Thinking in Systems, which is uh, written by Donella H. Meadows, which is an interesting book because I'm currently reading it. Uh, I'd say I'm like 60 pages out from finishing it, but most important parts have already been have been read, uh, according to my friend, right? So it's a very interesting book. I'm planning on finishing it obviously this week, but it's a very interesting book. So in the first book, 12 Rules for Life, Jordan Peterson talks about the fact that you need to address problems. And he does this by explaining this in a form of a, uh, I guess in a way, a fairy tale, a story, something along those lines. And I'm going to start by retelling the story he tells in the book. So you guys get the point. So there's this mom and a kid who live in a house. Uh, and the kid has a little dragon under his bed. And every time the dragon gets denied, his existence gets denied, um, he grows. Right? So every time the kid goes to the mom, it's like, mom, there's a dragon under my bed. Mom's like, there's no dragon under your bed. Dragons don't exist. The dragon grows a little bit. And every day the guy, the, the kid goes back to his mom and says, the, the dragon, he, he grew, uh, it's here. And the mom goes in, he's like, no, there's no dragon here. She keeps denying the elephant in the room up until the point that the dragon gets so big that the wings and his hands stick out of the side of the windows and the, the legs, they actually come out of the bottom of the house, out of the door, the windows, and he lifts up the entire house. And actually to the point where he runs off with the house and the mom thinks to herself, I should have listened to my son, right? And this story is basically a fairy tale, if you, if you will, right? But it's based on the premise that you need to address the elephant in the room. Because if you're not able to address the elephant in the room, problems are going to pile up. And he also talks about um, an interesting story about this guy and girl who end their relationship because the guy cheats, uh, cheats on the girl. And it's because every single time they get into an argument about not taking out the garbage, but they think like, ah, you know, I'm a good boyfriend. I'm not going to make a big deal of it. Um, for example, she doesn't please him in, in the bedroom and she never makes an argument about it because nah, I'm not, I'm not going to be a douche, right? I'm not going to say anything about that. And over time, all these problems pile up until she sees him at a cafe with another girl just hanging out, just a friend. And she just assumes that he's cheating because of all these problems and they're never able to address their problems. She gets into a rut. He gets into a massive rut because they both don't understand that all these underlying problems are what made, what made her believe that he was cheating on her, even though it wasn't exactly the case. But now they both believe that to be the truth, right? Which is an interesting thing to think about because that would basically mean that every problem that you have in your life would be less, a, a less big of a deal if you were simply just able to address the fact that this problem was there, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that if there's a problem in your life, simply addressing and acknowledging the problem or its existence will allow you to overcome the problem in a better manner simply because you know that it's there even though you know it. For, for example, right, if you're bankrupt, just sticking your head in the sand and thinking, I'm just not going to look at it, it's not going to work, right? But if you're going to say, all right, I am bankrupt, it's only then that you can start forming a plan to overcome your bankruptcy and you know move on with your life to a more financial stable future. And this is where this book comes in, which is Thinking in Systems, right? Because so Thinking in Systems is a book where they talk about systems, right? She does. And in the book, she says that you have a stock 
you have an inflow and an outflow and you have some clouds basically where they go into and everything in life is a system whether it's a balancing loop like trying to keep the room temperature the same whether it's an actual stock like the s p 500 or whether it's something else doesn't really matter but she basically goes to the point of saying that most things in life if not 99 percent of the things in life are systems bound by inflows and outflows meaning that if the inflow is a problem which are minor issues basically the way i see it if you have a relationship with a boyfriend girlfriend mom dad whatever every time there's a minor issue and you don't address it it gets added onto this stock to eventually a point where the outflow is just pure and utter chaos right because if you're never able to address the issue that you have with your partner never able to address the issue that you have with your friend your mom your dad then over time these problems pile up to the point where you're left scratching your head thinking I all of a sudden have so many problems with this person but I just never realized that these problems were even a thing and that's where uh, Jordan Peterson comes in and he says rule 10 for life is be precise in your speech and this is something that I've realized after reading this book is that I stopped trying to lie about problems I stopped saying like oh it's all right it's fine I just said like hey it's not it's not okay this or that is not okay um, this is a problem that is your problem this is my problem this is a problem because that actually allowed me to address the elephant in the room look at myself in the mirror and think to myself I need to address this problem and that's what's helped me a lot and if you start using this uh, systematic approach if you will that they talk about in uh, thinking in systems that you will realize that everything is in fact an inflow and outflow and that by limiting in this case the inflow of problems you can limit the outflow of other chaos and that might be easier said than done but before we leave here i'd like to start off with some practical uh, tips and takeaways for this podcast episode you could so you can actually utilize this in your life right so the first takeaway is if you can't handle yourself in situations like this you got to stop and count to 10 right that's the first main takeaway if you are emotion driven if you're mad if you get furious about little things it's time to first take a step back control your feelings so you can then make the right decision right not too long just gonna keep it a little bit uh shorter here and then the next one I'd say, uh, which is the most important one uh, for you to get into, uh, is the habit of actually addressing the problem by literally uh, saying it out loud, right? So let's say there's a problem that your mom hasn't uh, bought you the thing. And obviously you have to understand that the problem has to be a valid problem. You can't just go around saying like, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. You didn't do what you're supposed to do. It has to be a valid problem. So if someone isn't uh, pleasing you if someone is disrespecting you if someone isn't doing what he or she is supposed to or said that she is supposed to you have to actually uh, be um, uh, strong enough to address it and just say hey listen up you didn't do your part of the group project for example you should have done that and it's in saying that that you can then work towards a solution but the last important step which you have to understand is the way you deliver this message in the way uh, obviously it bounces back uh, towards you because you can't just go around saying to everybody hey you didn't do this you didn't do that and just act like you're the holy 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 jesus of everything and that you did everything perfectly fine uh because uh, you are not perfect perfect we are not perfect here uh, but i'm trying to say that you need to understand that in some situations by literally just acknowledging the fact that you are bankrupt that you are not being the good wife or husband that you were five years ago it's in that that you can overcome these problems maybe not alone but maybe even together which would be even better right uh, that you can move forward and you know find a antidote to the chaos in your life so thank you for listening to this podcast episode my name is sander and i'd love to see you guys back next week over here on youtube or on any other podcasting platform for example on spotify where i've made a list of all uh, the episodes up until this point and there's also a YouTube playlist that you can find at the end of this video with all the possible episodes up until this point there's a lot of knowledge in there a lot of interesting topics so make sure to go uh, listen to that just put it on the car when you're driving or put it on when you are working on some school stuff or going for a nice walk and I'll catch you guys next week 7 p.m. GND plus one or on Monday 7 p.m. GND plus one for another normal YouTube video over on YouTube so see you guys there peace